Okay. Hey, welcome to the Relentless Five Duty Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Martin. We got one of our favorite guests back. Amy Bailey is back. You know, she's if you missed her, she's been on here several other times. That's on you. She, it's, you know, she's been on. She's <laughs> episode 76, Finding a Life of Joy Without Alcohol is what kicked it all off. Then a few weeks later, she came back, episode 80, supporting a friend through dry January. And then episode 128 answered all your dry January questions. We had people send in questions. He nailed off, did a great job on those. So Amy is back. Thanks for coming back, Amy. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. You're our, you're our expert. So we got to have you back every time around December, January to talk about dry January. So today we're going to talk about kind of why would you want to do dry, dry January? You may even know some of those and then maybe some unexpected results you can get through going through January, dry January and maybe some other bonuses. Are along. We'll see what happens. So uh, first of all, let's let's catch up on what you've been up to in this past year. You kind of kind of hinted at it last time you're on here. Tell us about the, what that magazine behind you is. Um, well, about a year ago, I was working very, very hard on our first issue of Huntsville City Lifestyle, and that launched in February of this year. So we just closed January, which will be number 12, and will be out towards the end of December. And and then, yeah, February will be one year of issues. It's kind of kind of wild. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah. It's great. If you guys haven't checked it out, you got to check it out. So city lifestyle, you got to check that out. It's specific to Huntsville. It's local. It's got a really awesome artwork and cool people and great stories. You got to check it out. You got to check it out. So anyway, let's, let's get into this thing. And so why would someone want to do dry January? Why would they want to do that? Well, you know, I think there are a lot of things in our own lives and happening in the world right now. You know, some people just simply want to break a reset, um, it's always nice to give that liver a little a little break and and detox. And then other people may just be kind of bored with with the same old, same old, hey, let's sit in front of the TV and have a few glasses of wine, girls night out. Oh, I feel awful the next day. You know, at some point as we get older, some of those things start to seem a little mundane and, and boring. And so I think there's a curiosity, too of what if I took a break from this? How would I feel? Would I have more energy? Would I have more clarity? Would I be able to focus? Would my brain fog go away? You know, all those little questions that that as you get older, you start to ask. And, and then, of course, there's this whole sober, curious movement that seems to be happening with... Um, with millennials and, and Gen Z and, you know, what... Um, what is life like without just regular alcohol consumption? And so there's, yes, this whole hashtag sober curious thing happening, which um, which is pretty fascinating, too, when you think about it, because so many of us were brought up to believe that, well, in order to have a full life and have fun, you have to have this substance be a part of it. Yeah, but I was listening to uh, Bill Burry, he's a comedian, and he was talking about that he used to drink by himself and watch old movies because they would always be drinking during the movie. So he would just feel like he would have some camaraderie with these people on the screen. He didn't feel so bad about drinking by himself. So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. They got the, their own hashtag. You know it's serious when you get your own hashtag. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's some reason. So why, let's, in case they missed your past episodes, why did you decide, hey, I'm going to give this dry January a shot? You know, um, for me, I think, you know, I started just thinking more about mortality. We had had some loss in the family and, um, and that was, that was probably the first little trigger of, you know what, maybe, maybe we should look more about how this is affecting our health regularly. And, um, and so from a health perspective, we started to take breaks and, and, and cut back significantly. And, um, and then eventually, you know, I, there were various things happening with family and friends. And I thought, well, why not, why not make it more of a challenge and do a full year? But the, but the, the first initial um, trial was, was just a dry January. 
Well, I think I think that's much easier to think about. Well, I could do this for 30 days as opposed to, well, the rest of my life, I'm never, ever going right. to drink. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's great deal. to kind of yeah, break it down. I've had several friends do the same thing. Like, well, I'll give January a shot. And then, well, well I'm on a roll. I'll keep it going. Here's two months, three months. Next to know they've got a year under their belt. And it's pretty awesome how you can just kind of kind of short. You want this long term goal, but keep it short. And in the, in the 30 days is, is doable. Right. And if other people are doing it, if it's a, a new year and you've got a whole group of people supporting you, that's pretty awesome, too, because you all can have that camaraderie and talk about the benefits, how you feel, what you think, any any cool new non-alcoholic products you found. And so, I mean, it is huge to have a support system in all of that. That's right. Go back. Check out episode 80 starring Amy Bailey about supporting a friend through Dry Jane. If you need some more resources, she brought visual aids. You got to check out. She had visual aids for that one. So. I may have some today as well. Oh, man, you call, you always come so prepared. So let's kind of get into some unexpected results. You kind of know most of us know kind of the obvious stuff. What would happen? What are some kind of unexpected results you might see through Dry January? For me, one of the biggest things was the space that that alcohol took up. And, and so once it was removed, I felt like there were so many things that I put off or came up with excuses of why I didn't have time to do them. And when it was removed, it, it, I just felt like this whole space and time opened up. It, there was no longer, oh, well, I'm not going to um, walk or run tonight because, you know, their um, reading, um, there are just so many things that I feel like once it was removed and wasn't a daily part of my life that all of a sudden, wow, what do I, what do, I do with myself? Like these things that seemed somewhat um, not impossible, but just like chores, they no longer seem like chores. They seem like, yeah, okay, it's, it's after dinner. It's a nice night. Why not go on a five mile walk? You know, there was nothing was keeping me from wanting to do so many of these activities and, and, and hobbies and interests. Yeah, I think a lot of people, their hobby is drinking. I mean, it's kind of a honest thing. They just kind of get in and I don't say that there's something you shouldn't do. Meet up with friends, have a couple of drinks. I mean, there's, there's that. And then there's sure. just like what you've talked about before, just that robotic, I get off work. I make a cocktail, have a glass of wine, sit on the couch, watch TV, repeat every every day and just keep that going. Right. And it's not something that you do out of like choice or even enjoyment. You're just kind of doing it robotically. Right, right. Because it just becomes such a big part of our lives. And no matter if it's a celebration or we've had a bad day or, oh, it's just a Monday. Like we, we find ways to incorporate it into almost everything. And it's, and it's all around us. Society tells us that too, that it's just a, a normal part of day-to-day of -day life. Oh man, when I was in college, you'd be like, oh man, it's raining. I better, I better have a beer. Or it's like, <laughs> oh man, it's not raining. I better have a beer. <laughs> I mean, any, if you're looking for an excuse or a reason, you'll find it. Right. Right. That's for sure. So what are some other unexpected results you came across? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, I think, I don't know if this would be an unexpected result, but, um, you know, I, I found myself just more interested in learning new things, um, you know, uh, learning French or um, learning how to cook something new. It just seemed like there was this this newfound curiosity and um and excitement behind all of that too things didn't just seem like the you know the same old same old every day there was there was this new curiosity and um and even in talking to people i would i would say one of the biggest things i noticed previously when I would be in a group of people and there would be lively conversation, or even if I was one-on-one -on -one talking to somebody, I might, I might kind of fade out or I might start thinking of what I was going to say next. Mm. And now I feel like I'm right there with that person having a conversation 
and um, and I'm not thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm I'm listening to them, and I feel like there's a bigger connection in listening, and um, and I find myself looking for similarities. Whereas before, I might if I was having converse, a conversation with someone who I you know, might not agree with, or I thought we, we weren't a lot alike that I might turn off. And now I feel like I find, I look for similarities instead of differences. And I try to find that connection with everyone, you know? That's a great way to look at it. If, if you need a, a pencil or a library in French, I'm your guy. Other than that, I don't have much <laughs> on that. So that's cool. You think it just kind of, you know, getting alcohol out of your life, give yourself some more patience. So you're not, I don't know, physically and mentally sharper. Is that kind of what you see? For sure. A lot more patience. Um, I used to get restless standing in line. I used to get restless waiting in traffic. And I find myself a lot more at ease than I've ever been in my entire life. But let me ask you this. If you can remember way back, your first dry day, you got through January, what, what was your thought? Are you thinking like, hey, I'm kind of proud of myself? I mean, what was your, I mean, even on the, on that side, it was that an unexpected results. Like, oh, I've got some pride back in my life here. Oh yeah. It felt, it felt really good to know that, that I could do 30 days and, and not really miss it. Um, I think that was the biggest, most surprising part is in the beginning, you know, there's a little bit of awkwardness and this fear of, oh my gosh, am I going to be bored if I'm not doing this? And to, to see that fade away and to realize like, oh, I, I can definitely do this and I don't miss it. It's a, it's a nice feeling. That is cool. So after your, after your first 30, you said, okay, that was pretty good. Were you planning, I'm going to go long-term? You're saying, we'll just see how next month goes. Um, so after the first dry January, it was more of just a, cutting back and so deciding okay well what's happening this month is there a celebration you know and just kind of being cognizant of I don't want to do this every day I really don't want to do this regularly so what does that look like in my life yeah that's a great way to look at it um plan for those pitfalls. You know, I do a lot of nutrition coaching, things like that. And we kind of plan their week out like, well, hey, what, what's going on this week that we need to overcome? So if you know it's coming and you have a plan to overcome it, that's so much easier than you just hit it like, oh my gosh, you just got to react rather than just planning for it. So that's a great way to look at it. So um, right. if, if someone is going through dry January and say they slip up, they have a drink, then they're like, oh, what would you say to that person? What, what would your advice be? You know, as great as it is to kind of keep a calendar and keep track because that can make you feel, you know, empowered. I would also say, do not be hard on yourself. If, if you drink, that's fine. You know, like don't, don't think that, um, that a slip up means, oh, we'll forget that, you yeah. know, because it truly, it's your own journey. And so you, you just can't be hard on yourself and you have to, think of each day as a new day. Yeah. So I'm, I'm putting it every, all everything back to nutrition. So I, well, my clients I'll talk about, Hey, just own it. It happened. You know, you, you did that. And then it's hope you had a great time. It's okay. Let's just get back to work tomorrow. It's okay. Right. You know, don't right. let a slip slip become a fall. It's like, Cause so many people right. will mess up and they're like, well, forget it. I had a drink. I'm just going to drink the rest of January. Why well, I, I couldn't get the whole month and I can't do it. So I, that's great advice. Just, Hey, it, it's okay. Just, just get back yeah. to it. It's okay. So, it's such a mental thing. So if you can, sure. even with mistakes, because we all make them, if you can just stay focused. Yeah. So how about, are there some more unexpected results you might've thought of that maybe people aren't thinking about with this? Um, you know, um, and this is a little bit of an exaggeration, I suppose, but I feel like the longer alcohol was removed from my life, the more enhanced all these other senses became. And um, I mean, sense of smell, sense of taste, hear hearing, I mean, just all of it. It seems like everything is a little more amped up 
than it used to be. I mean, it's really, it's kind of interesting. We were on a walk one night and I, I just smelled this incredible food wafting through the air. And I was like, that is amazing. <laughs> and so, I don't know. I have read that that can happen um, because I was so curious when I started noticing that in my life that I did look it up and there have been different articles written on how it, it kind of enhances all the senses. Wow. You're like, you're like becoming a superhero. That's pretty awesome. Some people got to get bit by <laughs> spiders. You just quit drinking. That's great. So if, so if anyone's ever that. seen the Simpsons, there's, <laughs> there's an episode where Barney quits drinking and he becomes like a super athlete, super smart again. You got to go check that. If you're a Simpsons <laughs> fan, it's a pretty good one. But yeah. he's, he's, you know, he, it's pretty amazing. It's one of my favorite episodes, but um, so how about the, I mean, can I ask about the visual aid? Are we ready for the visual aid? Are we ready? I mean, I'm on the, I'm on pins and I'm on pins and needles over here. Okay. So, you know, I always try to recommend just little products that, that I think are pretty awesome. And especially, I mean, think about when we were growing up, there was Odul's. I mean, that was it. And so (laughs) the fact that all these things exist now, and most of them have been around less than five years, it just kind of blows my mind. But, um, Okay, so this is my new favorite. I discovered it at Le Petite, which is a little cafe on the square downtown, and it's called Hayo, and it's just, it's got all these little plant-based wonderful things in it, so it, um, so it's alcohol-free, but it mellows you out, so. What is that, like a beer or wine? What's a, what is it kind of mimic you? You know, I don't... It's carbonated, so it's fizzy. And then this is the watermelon lime, and there's all these different, there's a blackberry, there's a mango. So there's different flavors. It's hard to describe what it really tastes like. It's not, it definitely doesn't taste like a soda, but it also doesn't really taste like an alcoholic beverage that I've had. <laughs> so it's really, it's different. Yeah. Well, we yeah. just got to go to La Petite and try one then. That's all it is. You do. You do. Um, and then... There's Little Saints, and these are delicious. They have a lot of plant-based things in them and mushrooms. And anyways, it's it's very good. And again, this is more, the Hayo kind of is more, it mellows you, but it also has a little energy, you know, in it. These, these do not. These would be a nighttime, you know, not doing much after kind of. And then um, the wine cellar on, is it Whitesburg? Yes, Whitesburg. Um, They have all these different kinds of wines. And this one is Hand on Heart. And it's like a a rosé. It's very good. And so that's kind of neat to know that you can go in a wine shop in Huntsville. And they probably have, I want to say they've got like six or more different options for you to try. Um, from reds to, to whites to rosés. And then, of course, my favorite, Athletic Run Wild IPA. This is the best beer, and it is absolutely delicious. So uh, if you're a beer yeah. drinker, you know, I think you should try this. I don't care. Their sales are off the chart. Or, you know, if you've ever seen their sale numbers, yeah, they're off like the chart. So there must be something to it, right? Over 900%. Right? Yeah. Since yeah. like it's 2019. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So. Man, you should be like a, a non alcoholic drink model or something. You didn't even know how to hold the can right. That was impressive. Right? I was trying. <laughs> yeah. You've done that before, but that's cool. That's great. Those are all lo- available locally, too, if you're here in the Huntsville area. I'm sure wherever you are listening to this, they have options as well. Um, who knew that Alabama? What could be like the the hub of non alcoholic beverages? Pretty cool, right? Right. Yeah. I think we've got a ways to go, but we're getting there. We're getting, we're getting there. there. Yeah, we're getting yeah. there. So that's good. I mean, just um, think about a few years ago, there was nothing. Nothing. Okay, so this was a neat experience. So the athletic brewing, you can find that at Whole Foods, and I was standing there about to open the case and get a and 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 get a pack of it and there was athletic and then there was another the lagunitas there were several 
um, just NA options right there in the same case. And this guy came in and he opened and he got like one of everything. And then of course I, I grabbed mine, but, um, I was like, okay, so this is, this is good. This is a yeah. thing, you know, you're not the only one. It's not just yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, there, there's a movement going on. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is neat. And a friend and I recently were leaving a restaurant in downtown Huntsville and we had had our non-alcoholic spicy margaritas. And when we left, we overheard a woman asking the waiter, what kind of non-alcoholic options do you have? So, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Hashtag sober curious. <laughs> Here we go. That's it. Yeah. So tell us, <laughs> tell us a little bit more. If people want to, if they want to read City Lifestyle, if they want to see your website. What, what's the best way to keep up with all that? Um, so we're on Instagram at Huntsville City Lifestyle, and then also the website citylifestyle.com. and then you can look up the Huntsville Magazine. So cool. And if people want to keep up with you, what's the best way to keep up with you? Um, I am on Instagram at my scoop m y s c o o p. And I talk about the magazine and life and being alcohol free and lots of lots of different things. So. She's very fancy. If you're listening right now, she's very Instagrammable. So you need to go check out her profile. <laughs> I'll, I'll link all that in show notes. So you don't, if you're a bad speller like me, you don't have to worry about it. But um, Amy, thanks so much for coming back. You are always our expert. Isn't that, on the way out? Is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, you know, I have so enjoyed this. I love it. It's like, I think one of the things I look most forward to in December. So I appreciate it so much, Joe. And um, you're an inspiration to me. So. Oh, well, I appreciate that. You always do such a great job. We always get great feedback on your episodes and you're, you're helping a lot of people. There's a lot of people that were hashtag sober curious. And now they're sober. Thanks to you. That's a pretty good feeling. Thank you. Yeah, well, I love. thank you so much for tuning in around. Hey, if you're listening right now, please share this episode. People need those resources. They need to see the hand model with the cans out there. Man, that was amazing <laughs> right there. This could really help somebody, and you could help them by sharing this episode and keep sharing the positivity, and we'll see you guys next week on the Relentless Positivity Podcast. Wow, what a great episode. You share that with somebody. I'm going to share with you some awesome sponsors. McWilliams Marketing. They can help your business grow. Regardless of the size of the project, you're going to get a solution that is specifically created for you and your business. No cookie cutter, one size fits approach here. So Amy and her band of fearless marketers can help you with all that stuff that you think you can do, but you're not really that good at it. You don't have time for it. They can do that. They're the experts. It's what they do. Web design, online conversion, optimization, SEO, uh, graphic design, marketing, page management, all that stuff. Go let them do that. Don't handle that yourself. Go check them out at mcwilliamsmarketing.com. See what all they can do. They're amazing people. Teak Patnick with Patnick Real Estate. He really does it all in the real estate world. General real estate sales, acquisitions, property management, investments, all that good stuff. You're not just a transaction with Teak. He really wants to build a relationship for life with you. He has built his whole business on prayer, hard work ethic, honesty, and results. You can trust Patnick Realty with all your real estate needs. Hey, I trust my brother from another mother, Teak, and you should too. Give him a call, 256-694-0117, or email him at teak at patnickco.com. Over the past four years, Valley Leadership Academy has established a reputation for being the ideal alternative to traditional schools by providing an excellent education along with real-life leadership and service opportunities. Now is your chance to come alongside them and help them grow to the next level. Please visit valleyleadershipacademy.org to find out about personal and corporate sponsorships that will help this remarkable school grow in an even brighter spot in Huntsville. Together, we can make a difference. Hey, these are awesome businesses. Go support them. They're out supporting positivity and they will do you right. Have an awesome day.